In episode 2 of part 1, we went over how to install Linux on a virtual machine. Now that we have an environment ready, let's get started with the basic Linux commands. Alright, so before starting, a couple of things to note. My terminal setup might not look like yours and that's nothing to worry about. Just for the sake of visibility, I'm using a different terminal app so that the commands are clearly visible on the screen. Another thing to note here would be that I'm using an autocomplete plugin on my terminal, which you might not have. So don't worry about it. We are going to cover all of that in an upcoming series. Just focus on the commands and you'll be good to go. Alright, so let's start off with the ceremonial hello world of terminal commands. I'm going to go ahead and type in echo hello world. And I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, the message was printed out to the terminal. Echo command is basically used to write to the standard output. That was fairly simple. Let's go over another basic command. This time, we're going to check the date and time of our system using a terminal command. Just type in date and hit enter. And as you can see, it's going to give us the current system date along with the time in 24 hour format. It also prints out the time zone for you. These were two of the most basic commands, but let's level things up a little bit, shall we? Alright then, let's first clear out the console with the clear command. And let's learn how to navigate between different directories right from the terminal. Before doing that, we must learn how to find out which directory we are in currently. So to do that, we use the pwd command. pwd stands for print working directory and it basically prints out the current directory you are in. As you can see, I'm on the home of my system and it just printed that out. Next, let's learn how to list all the files and folders within our system. To do that, we use the ls command which stands for list. So it basically lists out the entire thing in a long scrollable list. But as you can see, it's not really helpful because a lot of the details are missing here. Well, with most of the Linux commands, you can use options. Options basically enhance or format the output of a particular command. The minus L option lists out a bunch more stuff that the regular ls command does not. For example, it gives you the date and time of modification, the file size in bytes, the owner of the file, and the permissions. I know all of these seems a little overwhelming right now. But trust me, in the coming weeks, we are going to work around all of them. And it's going to make perfect sense at that time. For now, just keep in mind that the minus L option with the ls command would print out a bunch more details than just the regular ls command. Alright, moving along, let's clear out the terminal again. Now as you can see, my terminal prompt has changed. Right now, I'm in the Linux demo folder, which I'll just show you using the pwd command. Now that we know how to list out files and folders, let's list out what's there in the Linux demo folder. Well, as you can see, it's pretty empty right now. How about we go ahead and create a couple of folders here, shall we? Alright. To create folders, which are called directories in the Linux terminology, we use the mkdir command. mkdir stands for make directory and it's used as follows. You type in mkdir and then specify the folder name. And now if I hit ls, you can see it says awesome folder is a folder inside Linux demo. I'm gonna go ahead and create another folder. And once again, if I do ls, we now have two folders. What goes hand in hand with the mkdir command is the rmdir command. The rmdir command is used to remove directories, as the name suggests. Now before using the rmdir command, let's list out all the folders that we have in our directory using ls. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the awesome folder. So let's type in rmdir. And once again, if I do ls, you can see that the folder is gone. What's worth noting here is that the rmdir command is pretty dangerous as its results are not reversible. 
so please double check before using this command. Alright, let's move along. Now that we have learned how to create directories and remove them, let's learn how to get inside and go out of directories. As you can see, I'm in the Linux demo folder and if I type in ls, you can see there's a folder named folder2. In order to get inside this, we use the cd command. cd stands for change directory and this is how it's used. We type in cd and supply the folder name. And as you can see now, the terminal prompt has changed. And if I do a pwd, it says I'm inside the folder 2. And if I do an ls, you can see that the folder is empty. Let's go ahead and create another folder inside this. And let's get inside the music folder. Again, our terminal prompt changed. If I do an ls, this folder is empty. Now let's say if I want to go back into the Linux demo folder, how do I do that? Well, we use the cd command again, but we are going to use options along with that. The option here is the double dots. If you use cd along with a single set of double dots, you'll go one level up. So as you can see, I went from music to folder 2. If I type that again, I'm back into Linux demo. But typing the same command twice isn't really fun. So I'm going to show you a shorthand. But before that, let's get inside the music folder again. Alright, now to get into the Linux demo folder, I'm going to use cd. I'll pass in the double dots and then I'll add a forward slash along with another set of double dots. This brings me directly to the Linux demo folder. What's worth noting here is the series of double dots and forward slashes depend upon the level of nesting of folders. If there were three folders instead of just two, there would be another set of double dashes. Now we just learned how to create folders and remove them and navigate between directories and getting out of them. We also learned how to print the working directory and the time. But what about files? How do you go about creating those? Well, there's a handy little command called touch, which you can use to create any file that you want. The touch command is used as follows. You type in touch along with the file name and the extension. Once done, hit enter. And if your terminal returns successfully, it means the file was created. Let's do an ls to see if it was created or not. And as you can see, Hello Linux is now a file. You can use the touch command to create all sorts of files. I'm gonna go ahead and create a python file called hello.py and let's go ahead and create an html file called index.html and now if I do an ls, you can see all of these files exist here. Alright, so we learned how to create files. Now, how do we remove them? There's an equivalent of the rmdir command that's called the rm command. It basically stands for remove. And since it's a dangerous command, I'm not going to teach you how to use it standalone. Instead, we'll use it along with the i option. The i option stands for an interactive mode. So basically, whenever you try to delete a file using the terminal, the terminal will double check with you. Here's a sample usage. As you can see, we have a couple of files here and I'm going to go ahead and delete the hello.py file. So I'm going to go ahead and type in rm and supply the minus i option. And let's type in the file name hello.py. And as you can see, the terminal is trying to double check with me if I actually want to delete the file or if it was an accidental operation. Since in this case, I do want to delete it. I'm going to go ahead and type in y. And if I go and do an ls again, you can see that the file was removed. Similarly, let's go ahead and remove the index.html file. And as you can see, it's again double checking with me. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in y. And you can see that the file was deleted. Since in this part, we focused mostly on installation and getting the basics right, we just focused on a couple of commands. 
but it's quite common to forget what a command does or what its options are. In that case, you definitely need some help. And while you can go ahead and do a Google search, there's a better way of figuring things out without even leaving your terminal. And it's called MAN. MAN stands for Manual Pages. And it's a Linux terminal command which can be used in conjunction with any command. Here's a sample usage. Suppose I do not know what the echo command does. I can go ahead and just man echo. And as you can see, it opens up a documentation. This documentation can be scrolled using your spacebar key. And to get out of it, you just hit the Q key on your keyboard. Let's try that out again. This time, let's try the ls command. As you can see, it gives us the name, a synopsis, a description, all of the options, and a bunch more stuff. This can really come in handy and help you figure out stuff without having to leave the terminal. Alright, so I'm going to leave it here for this part and try not to overwhelm you. But before leaving, I'm going to teach you a couple of neat tricks that you can use on the terminal so that you do not have to type that much. You might have noticed I wasn't typing the file names completely while issuing the commands. Well, you would be glad to know that the terminal has autocomplete features. And here's how it works. Suppose I want to delete the hello linux.txt file. I'm just going to go ahead and type in rm-i. And instead of typing the entire file name, I can just type a couple of letters and then hit the tab key and it auto completes it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit N here because I don't want to delete it. And let's create another file which starts with the hello phrase. Let's try that out again. So rm minus i and let's do just an edge. If you do a tab now, it's going to give you both the options. And if you hit tab again, you can basically toggle between which file to select. So I'm just going to go ahead and select hello.txt and hit enter and then confirm. Another really helpful trick that you must keep in mind would be the command history. Basically, all of the terminals keep a command history for you and you can scroll through them using the up arrow key. So as you can see, I had just issued the rm command and I can scroll back to it using the up arrow. And if I keep hitting the up arrow again and again, you can see I'm just cycling the history of all the commands that I issued. All right, this was a long video and I understand that with a topic like Linux, I cannot expect all of you to understand everything in a short span of this video. This is why we are going to make this a weekly series so that you have enough time to play around with the commands that were covered in each part. Next week, we'll level things up a bit and try more complex commands. So make sure you give yourself enough time and familiarize yourself with the basics. That brings us to the end of episode 3 and part 1 for this series. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss out on any of our content. The companion blog post for this part would be in the description below. Until next time, this is me Pratik signing off.